Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Walter P. Barnstormer and today we're going to do something a little bit different. I've had a couple of requests just to do a quick intro or a quick setup video on how to do the No Man's Land. So what I'm going to do today is just run through some of the setup and the mods that I use for it and how to generate kind of that perfect starting scenario for yourself. All of this is based as a PC player. Fortunately, a lot of this stuff won't be available at the minute for console players. So first things first, what we need to do is first go and download the actual mods themselves. So I highly recommend you use the actual farm sim website itself, the mod hub on there, it's where I get the vast majority of my mods from. Type no man's land into the little search box and scroll down, you'll we'll see the map here and I'm sure we're all familiar with this, this is where we can download the map, you can flick through the different screenshots etc. All things that I'm sure we've done a million times before. So we go ahead and download this. Now there is a few other ones as well that I've already pre-searched and have here ready. So also use power tools. If we search in the mod hub for that as well, download that one. And paint and terraform anywhere. The next one we're using is free landscaping tools. And this one isn't necessary due to the way we do this, but um, it can come in handy. Onto Lumberjack after that. This is one that I use for gameplay. And again, for gameplay, we've got Cultivator Field Creator. It makes a big difference whenever it actually comes to playing the game. And then the last couple are ones that I use in my own game itself is Silage Silo Pack and the Cellular Antenna. So we can see this one. This is just a little placeable that you plop down, costs about $1,000, but it actually starts generating you a little bit of money as well quite handy and quite realistic looking too. Okay, so once they're all downloaded, we need to navigate to the folder that they've been downloaded into. If we select them all, right click and select cut, and then navigate to your farming simulator folder. In my case, it's stored in documents and my games. Go down to the mods folder, open it up. You can see I've got a lot of mods already installed. Get a bit of space, right click again, and then select paste. This will then copy all those files across into your mods folder so whenever you start your game they'll appear in game as well. Moving on we boot up Farming Simulator of course and we select a new career option. It's going to be a new save game. Just going to quickly skip through this, create a new character. Now I always go for easy on this as new farmer. You can set your difficulty levels afterwards into the actual menu system so don't worry about that I just like using the new farmer one because it preloads all the buildings. Now those mods that we talked about I'm just going to deselect and select all again just so I know that absolutely everything's going to be in the game and then wait a couple seconds for the map to load up. And here we are where we start off at the shop in no man's land. We have our pickup truck beside us. First things first that I'll do for it is go into our garage. This is all the starting equipment that the game has given to me and the very first thing I'm going to do is sell it all off. So I sell everything, I'll keep the pickup, um, just because it's it's a nice little pickup, I like it, and I need something to travel around the map in. But I just, um, especially for my no man's land, I like to start, start with nothing essentially. So all this equipment has to go, and I'll eventually get round to buying most of it back again at some stage. Now that everything's sold, we'll jump into the pickup and take a drive up to the actual farm itself. Now as we started on New Farmer you can see we've obviously got buildings, houses etc already on the premises and that is the reason why I start as New Farmer so it gives me options really. If I was to go into the start from scratch and whatnot all these buildings wouldn't be here and you have no real way of putting them in again just as nicely as especially as Alien Jim has done on this one. So I go into the power tools menu by hitting F12 and the first thing I do is add a lot of money. Um, doesn't matter what it is, just a silly amount of this, about five and a half million. Um, you can come back and again, add another five million later on, really doesn't matter. Just make sure you have plenty at the minute. And then into the shop menu, and if we go to the bottom option and into construction, 
here we can start traveling around our map and selling off anything we don't want. If I don't want the water tank, I can sell the water tank. I'll choose to keep it in this case. And we'll go across this little shed. We'll actually sell this shed. Um, values at zero pounds doesn't matter. We've got five million pounds in the bank. Now, one thing we will see is if we do sell stuff off, the landscaping effect remains. But this is where the free landscaping tools that we installed comes into play. I can go off and if you look at my money, it's not actually taking any money off me for this. Realistically, it doesn't particularly matter whenever I've got the power tools installed because I can just add money in and out as I see fit. So it's up to you if you want it or not for that. I might use it a little bit more in actual gameplay. But here you can see you can just plant new grass, um, repaint the meadows, do whatever you want, put in a few new shrubs. Um, it looks quite realistic again, you know, you would never know a shed had been there. Just to fancy it up a little bit as well, we'll go in and throw a few trees down. Now we take a look at the money, we see we are actually getting charged for the trees. These don't come as free for the landscaping. It is only the sculpting and the actual painting that you get for free. But again, with power tools installed, it doesn't really matter. I can uh, configure my money to be whatever I actually want it to be. So the next thing we'll go on to then is actually starting to define a few paths and roadways. I haven't done this yet in my own map, I'll probably do it as part of the actual development of the story. But again it's just going into the landscaping tool, painting, selecting your texture, so I'm going to go for a dirt in this, selecting your brush size, your brush shape, etc. So I've gone for a circle, I've made it a reasonably big size, and then you just start, start painting. In this case, there is kind of pre-existing pre paths on no man's land. You can just about make them out. So I'm just following that round and making myself a little roadway. Now, all of this kind of stuff is completely up to your own imagination. You can either follow the paths that are kind of already there on the map or just go wherever you want with it. You can set up your own shapes, your own roadways, your own networks, whatever you want. Generally, once I've got the basis done as well, then I'll drop the tool down to a smaller size, pick a different texture, and just do a little bit of what I kind of call roughing up as I go through it. Um, you tend to find if it's just one plain colour, it looks a little bit fake, a little bit false. Um, you never get as good an effect with this as you do in Giant's Editor, but obviously you can't um, kind of go in and out of the editor all the time. So this gives a really good effect, and it's all done in-game. So, yeah, more than happy with this. And jump back in the pickup, and there you go. We have a new path. And for something that took 30 seconds to create, that looks pretty decent. It is something I really should do in my own game in a minute as well, but I just haven't got round to it yet. So you can see the different textures as well, and I think it just breaks it up a little bit and makes it look a bit more realistic. Just have a bit of an experiment here for myself as well. Just bought myself a chainsaw. This is a tree that I've obviously bought and placed. I was never sure if you could actually cut these down, but yeah, it certainly looks like you can. So there you go, the trees that you buy in the shop. Um, you could actually, oh, this one looks like it's exploded slightly at the top, okay. I know there are a few glitches with the trees at the minute still on FS22, so just cut the top off of this and see how it handles that. It hasn't got any worse anyway, so that's something. And take this top limb off as well. Yeah, something's gone slightly wrong there. Don't know if it's a problem with the map or a problem with another mod or uh, whether I've got the Lumberjack mod installed and it's maybe conflicting with something. Don't know. I'm um, also using the super strength here just by holding down the Alt key. That's part of the Lumberjack mod as well. So you see, you can pretty much pick anything up with it. The tree's a bit heavy to pick up at one end, but you go to the middle, it's just a bit better balanced. So what we're going to look at now is just going in and doing a few buildings. Again, you can set this up for whatever way you want to be playing this yourself. I obviously did a biomass heating plant in mind to give me somewhere to sell the wood, but you just go into the venue, you've got five and a half million pounds in the bank still, and plunk down a few things as and where you want them. Um, now, I'm just placing these in random positions all around the map, and if you're doing your, your own gameplay, you'll probably have a little site for it somewhere, you'll make it a little bit tidier, put it, put it in relevant places, but you know, it's your own game, you do it as you please yourself. Now as you can see, because I have not been careful and well where I've been placing these, the landscaping has really gone a bit berserk on this. 
can see in front of my cow pasture there, there's lots of hills and valleys and cliffs everywhere. So that's why it pays to actually you know, take care of where you do this. But again, with the free landscaping tool, we can hopefully sort a lot of this out. Now I'll give a very quick example of this, where I'll go in and adjust a bit of the terrain. We'll start out around the back, go to the smoothing tool, just make it a bit bigger, increase the intensity of it as well, and then just start smoothing. Now, you need to be careful with this as well, especially whenever the terrain is so vastly and different to what the default is. You get these really steep slopes. You'll see why in a couple of minutes, but yeah, it can cause problems with the placeables as well. I'll come around the front and just start smoothing out a bit around there as well. We'll raise the ground up a little bit, try and uh, just make that humps and bumps a little bit less noticeable. It can be quite tricky doing this. It does take a bit of practice, but again, as you see, it's not charging us any money for anything at the minute. And you just kind of do this to your to your own eye, play about with it. Um, if you do alter the terrain as in the height or you flatten it, it does take away the grass texture off it as well. But as we know, we can paint all of that back in again as well. I do prefer using the circle shape as well for the vast majority of it, um, just because it gives a much nicer, more natural looking line. So we see after that couple of bits of adjustments, we'll get back into the pickup here. And I mean, it's by no means perfect, it still needs a little bit of titivation yet, but it's a lot better. At least I can drive over it now without somersaulting the pickup. But what I said earlier about watching out using that smoothing tool around buildings, this is the reason why. If you look at the fence line, you'll see my fence is now floating. Because I've smoothed the ground down so much in the wrong place. So that's why it pays to definitely watch where you're pitting buildings and trying to get them on fairly flat and level terrain. Now I wonder how much would I get for this quite large trunk as well, because it's in one piece. Again hitting the Alt key there just to use super strength once I pick it up, and then I can let go of the Alt key and just block it across the sales point. Now this tree cost me about two and a half thousand pounds to plant. And I'll see how much money I'm going to get in total for it here. Now there we go, about five thousand pounds in total for that one, so it's another good little way if you could set yourself up a bit of a forest, a few different trees in it, things like that. Just, just something to make things a little bit different. And the next thing then we'll look at is about how do you set up your actual farmyard itself as well. So you can do this again whatever way you want. You can set yourself up silos, silos extensions, put yourself in a couple of sheds, whatever mods and things that you want to download and use in your own game. And look here, just throwing up a quick barn. So. Again, nice flat ground here. Quick, quickly click on that and down, throw a little shed in beside it. So we go, we've got a barn, a little drive shed. In the landscaping tool again, select painting, and we'll put a little driveway into it as well. There we go, as easy and as quick as that. looks pretty good for you know, something that takes such little time. And then finally the last thing we'll do is look at the equipment. Um, again, you set this up as you want in your own game. You have the unlimited money at the minute, so go in and buy yourself the biggest tractor, the smallest tractor, whatever you kind of want to roll play with yourself. The Fleagle, that'll do nicely for now, for 271. So you just go backwards and forwards doing this with all your equipment, setting yourself up for all the bits and pieces that you want, the different productions, the factories, the roadways, everything that you want yourself on no man's land. And once you've done that, we will sort our money out again as well. So we're going to skip forward now, say I've set everything up, I've got it all how I want it and ready to actually start doing my game proper now as well, doing my challenge. So for me it was a £100,000 loan and £14,000 in debt, so all I did was borrow the money, go back into power tools and then just adjust 
my actual money value. To take money out, just put the minus sign in at the start. I had roughly four million pounds left, so I'm going to minus that. It's left me 18,000 in debt. I think, oh, maybe that's a little bit too much in debt. Go back to add a little bit more money in. I'll stick, I don't know what, 19,500 back in. So there we go. Now 689 pounds in the black. And that's pretty much how I set myself up on no man's land. Hopefully you have found this video useful. I know I've had a few requests just to show and explain how I do it. So if you do like the video, please do give us a thumbs up below. Do like, share and subscribe. It helps the channel grow. And hopefully we will see you again as we continue our adventures. Bye now.